Yo, what up? How's it going? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the augments. Long awaited augment guide. Normally I make these in preseason, but there were so many new augments that I felt I really needed to test a lot of the stuff. I can now say that I have tested enough of the augments to feel comfortable giving you guys a guide, considering I just climbed all the way to Challenger. And augments and utilizing them correctly was a huge, huge part of that. So let's just get into it. Okay, here we are, and before we start going through all the augments, I just wanna set up a couple rules and, and tell you guys, you know, give you guys the skinny before we get into this. I am not gonna be talking about the strength of each of these augments, because that changes every patch. I mean, we have a patch, to, at the time we filming this video, we have a patch tomorrow, and uh, tons of these augments are getting touched. The goal of this video is to tell you guys what are the best scenarios to take each augment, and that will not change uh, throughout balance. One thing to note is, um, in 6.5, they keep adding a lot of rules to augments on when you can get them and stuff like that. I cannot see the future and I can honestly not keep up with those rules because they change every single patch. Uh, so just know if I say something like, hey, you should take this at 1.4 and then at the time you're watching this video, you can you are no longer offered it at 1.4 anymore. Those are like rules they add to that. Like stuff like that will change with patches. So just understand that. In this video, we're gonna talk about what are the best scenarios to take them and how to properly utilize each augment. So let's do it. All right, Ancient Archives. This is where you get a Tome of Traits. Um, this is just where you'll get an emblem for uh, an emblem for something on your board. You'll get an emblem that, that you'll now be able to play around. If you take this at 1-4 at the very beginning of the game, it's gonna be completely random. There is a table out there for Tome of Traits and it actually just got updated for um, how many traits you need to have active on your board or how many traits you need on your board total in order to manipulate the manipulate which tome of traits you'll have you can look up that table it's it's public information I believe it's on mort dog's uh channel we're not going to like dive through all that we'd be talking through it forever um but yeah so this is a good augment to take at any point in the game it's just a generally good augment if you take it early game like uh, at one four you can just insta pop it and just play around whatever whatever uh, emblem it gives you. It's a really good strategy. Like I love taking this and I just insta pop it, and 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 we're good to go. Late game, if you take this at any other point in the game, you'll have a lot more traits on your board, and so whenever you pop it, it'll give you it'll more likely give you something that you can use with your current board. So it does have those built-in odds into it. Um, so something to note about that is if you do take this later on in the game, like maybe on stage three or stage four, if you take Toma Traits, it's very important that if you are about to do a transition, you do your transition first, do a combat, and then pop the Toma Traits. Because the way the Toma Traits works when you pop it is that it, if it's trying to make tailored traits, it does it off of your last PvP combat. So the last time you're fighting another player, it'll be based off those traits. It does not change if you just change your board like in, you know, while you're in the building phase of your team, you change your board and then sell it, it will not count. It counts for your last combat. So you need to actually fight another player, not not environment, not PVE. You have to fight another player and then pop the Toma Traits. At least at the time I'm making this video, that is how it works. So if you want to actually manipulate the odds, make sure you have already fought a player with the board that you want to play in the late game. You understand? But in the early game, you just take it and you just insta pop it and play around that. You're good to go. Okay, RK Nullifier. I don't think this is in the game at the time we make this video, um, but it is just the AP weak spot. So your unit's uh, abilities ignore 20% of the magic resist and reduce healing received by 50% for eight seconds. This is not currently in the game at the time we make this video, but if it is in the game, this would be a very good augment to take if you're playing AP and you haven't built a Morello yet. Um, it is not very good if you've already built a Morello. I mean, it still does ignore 20% magic resist. This gets added to the game anytime you're playing AP, this would be great to take, um, pretty, pretty basic. Okay, uh, now these hearts, these hearts and, and the trait specific augments, I will kind of just like really, like the hearts, I'm just gonna basically skip. And the ones that are really specific to traits, I am going to like qu quickly, quickly go through because I mean, there's not really much to say. If you're playing those traits and you're gonna play a comp around those traits, then take that, then you can take those augments. You know what I mean? There's really not much to talk about. So Arcanus heart, take it if you're playing Arcanus. Art and Sensor, allies healed, healed or shielded by enchanters gain 50% attack speed for the rest of combat, and then you gain a Lulu. This is good if you're going to play around enchanters. This is not very great to take in the early game, because in the early game, you don't really build enchanter comps, um, because all the enchanters are 2, 3 cost, and 4 cost. So you typically will build it in the mid game or late game. So 
This is a great augment to take late game if you know you're going to play run enchanters or it's a you know it's a magic damage heavy lobby and you know you know you're going to do it. Obviously, it's great, very great if you're going to play like a uh, Senna reroll or something like that. So, um, yeah, guys, just just take this if you're already playing enchanters. This is not a very great augment to just take at the beginning of the game, you know. But obviously, there's probably situations you would. But in general, just don't really take this early game. Ascension. Um, after 15 seconds of combat, your units deal 50% magic damage. This is good all the time. In general, just a very decent augment. So you can just take it pretty much all the time unless you're running a very bursty composition. So for example, if you're playing like assassins or you're playing like vertical challengers, it would not be good in burst situations. But if you're playing a very stally build or if the or if the lobby has a lot of stall or if the meta is very stally, then this would be good to take. So like, for example, if you're playing like an RE comp, this is gonna be very good. Or if like, let's say like Ari is very meta and everyone's playing her stall like, which is probably how she's going to be when she's meta, might be meta next patch. Um, this is this will be good to take in those lobbies against that. So if you're in a stall meta, just think back to last set, whenever protectors were super, super, super meta, that's a stall build. Ascension was like so broken on that patch. Um, so yeah, Assassin Heart, take it if you're playing Assassins. Backfoot, your units uh, that start combat in the back two roads gain 20% attack speed. This one is generally good to just take all the time. Very good, very, very, very good. Even if you're going to play a frontline carry, you could just put them on the back roads. It's not it's not the end of the world to just put an Aurelia or a Trendymere in the back line. Uh, so this is good to take all the time. Obviously not as good when you do want to carry those uh, frontline DPSs, but it's not the end of the world. This one's great. Battle Mage, your units start combat in the first two rows, gain 30 ability power. Uh, this one's kind of hard to play around uh just there's not a lot of frontline ap carries but this is this can be very good i like it a lot with bruisers um obviously it's good with arcanus if you're gonna like reroll a vex in a, in a swain or something um but yeah i like it with bruisers i like it with arcanus um i like it with renata bruisers because you can put second row renata it's not bad with ari if you want a second row ari second row ari is pretty good and 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 they're updating it on this patch so um so yeah if you're gonna play arcanus bruisers uh stuff like that pretty good with battle mage uh, blue battery after casting their ability your units restore 10 mana this is good in most scenarios but it's especially good with units that have low mana costs think like re brand stuff like that so this is in general just good to take all the time but is much better if you have low mana cost um so take it in those scenarios bodyguard heart take it if you need more bodyguards you're playing bodyguards you want more stall take it bruiser heart take it if you're playing bruisers it's, it's funny it says gain a trundle <laughs> you can't gain a trundle guys uh, anyways, uh, built different. Your units, uh, no active traits, gain 300 health and 50% attack speed. Um, this is a tiered one, built different one, two, and three. Typically, if you take built different one, uh, you only take this in the early game. And I, I think it can only be offered in the early game now. I, um, I, I, yeah, I think it can only be offered in the early game. Anyways, if you take built different one, it's uh, typically how you play around built different one is you play a built different comp, which is just where you play upgraded units that have no synergies. That's how you play built different. And usually by stage four, um, you start to play a real composition, like a, an actual normal normal comp, and you just forego built different. Or by stage five, it's just kind of like in, in, in there somewhere. Stage four, stage five, you typically want to just be running a real comp, and you just play this for early game. Now, if you have built different two or three, you can just play built different the whole game, like straight up the whole game, and, and you can do that. Um, and, and something to note, if you do play it the whole game, you either reroll, reroll your early game units, or you play like a transition into a late game board and you just play legendary units that don't have synergies together. <laughs> so you play like Kai'Sa with no synergies, Jin with no synergies, you play like Zeri with no synergies, stuff like that. Um, so that's how you play it. But yeah, if you typically have built different one, you, you don't play the whole game. You just play it for early game tempo. Calculated loss, after losing combat, you gain two gold and a free shop refresh. It's one of the best augments to take at the beginning of the game. Very, very, very good at the beginning of the game. Not really great to take at any other point. I don't know if it can be offered at any other point. Um, but this one, you can take every game and you just run a week. Calculated loss is just the best of both worlds because you could just run a week early game, right? I usually just try to lose the first three rounds and you gain two gold and a free shop refresh. So you can just start creating a strong board and you don't have to like lean into this completely and just like lose every round to like try to maximize your income. Because what you can just do is lose the first three rounds of the game, make some income and use that income and your free shop refresh to make a strong board. Now you play a strong board but you're down a combat augment. So if you win the round, you win the round. That's great. Awesome. We won the round. Cool. Um, we saved some health. We won the round. If you lose the round, you gain two gold. You gain two gold and free shop refresh. So you don't have to maximize this. You can just lose the first three rounds, gain some gold, build a strong board. And now for the rest of the game, every time you lose, you gain some gold and a shop refresh. That's awesome. Every time you win, you win. Great. It's an awesome augment. It's, it's very good. Celestial healing. 
Um, your units heal for 12% uh, uh, dealt by attacks and abilities. Excessive healing is converted to a shield. Now, there are three tiers of celestial healing. Um, I just rate them pretty much all the same. In general, very good augment, especially if you need healing and, and, and you haven't built healing healing items, um, you know, like you're playing a carry that you would like to have healing on, like Draven or something, and you didn't have room to build a BT, you get this, boom, nice, we have healing now. Um, so I'm just going to talk about Celestial and Thrill of the Hunt right here, because they're extremely similar, they're both healing augments. Uh, now, Thrill of the Hunt is when you kill a unit, you gain healing, uh, you gain a, a flat health every time you kill a unit, if you get the actual kill on them, not just a takedown. Um... You will heal now i'm just going to talk about those augments together in general thrill the hunt is better in the early game because that flat heal is just so much like 400 for bait for for the tier one just that flat heal is so much more than you would ever heal from a percentage um so the flat heal is so much more valuable in the early game and celestial is a little bit more valuable in the late game because you can get the shield the shield is very important on your backline carries and especially if you start to tear it up it can get to a Get to be a very fat shield especially for like a really low health unit can get this really fat shield can make them very tanky so in general celestial is better in the late game um thrill is better in the early game but you can take them both at any stage but those are typically the rules i follow okay challenger harp take it if you're playing challengers chemtech overload take it if you're playing chemtex and you and you want to have chemtech overload chemtech heart take it if you're playing chemtex clockwork heart take it if you're playing clockworks or you or you want to play a comp around clockworks like challengers snipers <laughs> Challengers, snipers, innovators, that sort of thing. Um, concussive blows, uh, strikers, strike, uh, strikers, <laughs> strikers, critical strikes, stun their target 1.5 seconds. Each target can be stunned once every seven seconds, gain a rex eye. Um, at the time we make this video, this is actually getting up to a tier two. I don't agree with that. And then they're buffing the duration to six seconds. Um, if you're playing strikers, it, this is very good. Um, I don't know if it needs to be upgraded to a tier two, but if you're playing strikers, very, very, very good. Not sure how it's going to be on tier two though. All right, Cutthroat, Assassins, Mana Reeve. You don't know what Mana Reeve is. It ups the mana cost of whoever you're hitting. Mana Reeve's the first unit they attack, increasing their mana by 65% until they cast. It's very good when you're playing Assassins, especially with the Kha'Zix. Whenever he jumps down, he'll Mana Reeve, and then he might jump to someone else. Mana Reeve again. It'd be very good. Um, cybernetic Implants. Your units gain, a units with an item gain 150 health, 10 attack damage. These are all the same thing, so I'm not gonna like go through each of them. So if you look at Cybernetic Shell, 150 health, 30 armor, and then Uplink is health and mana restore if you have an item equipped to them. This is extremely good early game. Any tier of any tier of this, any tier of any of the cybernetics, very good early game because you don't have to commit completed items. So you can just put components everywhere. Okay? Um, very, very, very strong um, if you're gonna maximize it. One thing I just want to say about that, if you are a beginner player or just, you know, an, an inexperienced player, you're just getting back in, it can be difficult to like break your items all around and you can get very dizzy. So just be a little bit careful with that. But if you are truly trying to min-max playing cybernetics, very good at taking the early game and just spread around your items. You don't complete items um, unless you have enough components that you can share all the wealth and then complete the items. Um, if you want to maximize this now that's not to say this isn't good in the late game because in the late game if you have a three item carry and they have you know cybernetic shell and they have an extra armor and stuff like that hey that's great too but it's just a little bit better in the early game and then take it to the late game if you have nothing else nothing else better to take or if it's just really good for your composition i think cybernetic shell is the best of these three at the time we're making this video i mean just armor is just a great stat to have in the early game um cool debonair heart take it if you're playing debonair um disintegrator units uh, attacks deal bonus damage equal to two percent of the target's maximum health this is actually getting nerfed right now um this is fine to take if you just need more damage a lot of these augments give you damage to your comp so if, you're, if your comp is low damage and you think you need more damage you can take it you know units i think would be pretty decent with this is like re um re sivir units that damage comes out a little bit slower and goes kind of like does over time renata could be very good with this um, so people have more of like damage over time, even though both of those spells aren't really dots, you know, Ari and stuff like that, but it feels like dots. It feels like damage over time, uh, but I don't really like this augment in general. Uh, at the time we make this video, I just don't like it, but maybe when you're watching video, it's pretty good. Uh, cool. Yeah. Take it when you have kind of like low damage comps or, or comps where you kind of whittle the down, whittle them down, like Ari, Renata, Sivir, that sort of thing. Dominance after winning combat, gain one goal, one bonus gold for every two surviving units. This is not a very good augment, uh, but this is really good if you're like smurfing. If you're playing in lobbies where you know you're like much better than the people you're playing against, um, or if you're just like crazy streaking, you can take this. But in general, I would not recommend taking this unless you're a smurfing or you're just like way stronger than the rest of the lobby. This is pretty hard to play around because if you take it, 
you are now down an augment. So now someone who took an augment could take, could have like a combat augment, combat augment, and could use that to kill your streak. And now you're getting nothing from your aug, nothing from your augment that you took. So you're basically down an augment. Um, yeah, I did not like this augment very much. Double trouble. If you have exactly two copies of a champion on your board, they both gain a bunch of stats. Here's all the stats. You gain a ton of stats. And when you upgrade to three star, you will gain a two star copy. That is very important. This part is very important. Um, double trouble. You typically play whenever there are more scenarios than this, but this is the scenarios that people have found that work really well so far is that this is really good to take if you are re-rolling. Um, the, the best build I've found that a lot of people typically run is like re-roll twin shots. You know, you're playing like GP and you're playing Lucian and maybe you're playing Corky and you just run copies of all those units. I've also seen people play re-roll innovators and they'll just have two copies of Ezreal's, two copies of Twitch's, two copies of Camille's and they're all three stars. So it's very good whenever you have a three-starred uh, three unit and running with this. So typically very good with the re-roll builds, but I can see other scenarios this is good. It's actually getting hard nerfed at the time we make this video because it was very, very, very strong with re-rolling. So very good with re-rolling, guys. All right, duet. Summon one additional socialite spotlight. The spotlight now grants 400 bonus health. This one you can take pretty much all the time if you know you're going to play around socialite. Um, it, it's, it's pretty good. And a lot of times it'll make like a spotlight on one, one spot on the map and then on the other. So you can utilize it no matter what comp you're playing. Sometimes it doesn't do that. Sometimes they're right next to each other and that's kind of messed up, but most of the time, uh, you can just utilize it anytime. So if you want to play around social, you can take this very strong. If you're playing around social, let your charge when your units receive a critical strike, they deal magic damage to nearby enemies. Once in cooldown. Um, this is very, very, very good to take in the early game. It's actually getting hard nerfed on the patch. I'm doing this because this was such an OP augment. On at the time of making this video very 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 good in the early game and then you could take this late game if you think your comp is like low damage or you have uh, a very stall s comp something like Ari, you're putting like bodyguards enchanters um especially good if you have magic shred because this does deal magic damage uh so if you're playing something like Ari and you have like a spark slammed on somebody or a shiv um this can be very good combat with that but other than that you just take it in the early game Enchanter Heart, your team counts as one Enchanter. Take it if you're playing one. Take it if you're playing Enchanters. They're good on the patch, you know. Um, Forcer Heart, you gain an additional Enforcer. Take this if you're playing around Bruisers. Uh, you want to play around Bruisers in the early game, uh, or you can take this late game to get in four Enforcers. Four Enforcers are pretty strong. On Guard, uh, the first time an enemy is attacked by a Challenger, they are disarmed for three seconds. This is very good when you're playing Challengers. This is just like the Striker uh, augment, but for Challengers, very good. Exiles, your units start combat with no adjacent allies. Gain a maximum health shield for eight seconds this is in general very strong to take you can take this all the time if you don't know what to take just make sure you properly utilize it one thing to note about it you will not be able to play silco and get his buff um because you will you will mess up the exile thing if you play silco you can still play silco but you just can't get the mana buff so just just think about that if you think silco is going to be a critical part of your comp but in general uh this is a very strong augment to take in most scenarios uh featherweight uh featherweights um your one and two cost units gain 25 percent movement speed and attack speed Generally, you just take this if you're re-rolling. Featherweight's one, on the other hand, you can just take it and play it for early game and uh, run a strong early game around one and two cost. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to re-roll one and two cost. And you can just take this to run a strong early game. And then uh, when you transition out of it, you know, you're just going to be down a silver augment. But being down a silver augment in the late game isn't the end of the world. Most, like half of the lobby will be down a silver augment in the late game. But if it's Featherweight's two or three, you'll typically build an entire composition around that. Um, you just reroll one and two costs. So whatever one and two cost reroll build is meta on that patch, you can play this. Very good with like reroll switch innovators, that sort of thing. First aid kit. Um, all healing and shielding received by units increased by 35%. This is good in almost all scenarios. When you get to the late game, you'll have so many types of shields, heals, stuff like that. Basically, every comp will have this stuff. So very, very, very strong. Um, very good with enchanters. Very uh yeah, very good with like stall comps like enchanters, seraphine, that sort of thing. But this is good in all scenarios. Generally, just a very strong augment to take if you don't know what to take. Free healthcare. I'm not sure this is in the game, but all units benefit from the chemtech chart. Yes, it is in the game. Um, I just didn't recognize the name. All units benefit from chemtech trait as if they were chemtech units. This does not affect the number of chemtech units gained um gain of Warwick. Uh yeah, so this it means exactly what it says. If you're playing chemtechs and then like the other maybe you're playing like Quinn and, and Quinn and Camille with them, like you're playing four challenger. Um now your Quinn and Camille will will they will act like chemtechs, but it will not up your chemtech number on your synergy. But they will perform like chemtechs. They will have all the all the bonuses as if they were chemtech. Take this if you're playing chemtechs, guys. This is the best one of these, and I think this is when, this one is getting up to tier two, um, because this one is the best of of like the unity augments. Anyways, hex nova the first time a hex tech champion drops below sixty health, they increase nearby enemies maximum mana by fifty percent until they cast again a nocturne. Uh, take this if you're playing a lot of hex techs, so like four, six, or eight. This can be very good with hex techs, and you want to try to 
um, you know, clump your units together a little bit more. Hextech Armory, all units uh, benefit from Hextech trait as if they are Hextech units. So this is the same thing with the Kimtech thing. Take this if you're playing four Hextech, um, four Hextech or six Hextech, just make sure you actually have other units that can benefit from this. So if, if Hextech vertical is good and you wanna play around like four Hextech, if you have like four Hextech and then like four non-Hextech units, I think that's a magic number. I think that's the best uh, time to use it is when you have four and four, so you're like level eight, for Kim Tech and, and Challenger and all of them. So those are probably the best scenarios. Hextech Heart, take it if you're playing Hextech. Um, Hyper Roll, if you have less than 10 gold at the end of the round, gain two gold. This is one of the best early game augments that you can take every, that you can take every game. Um, this is not very good to take at any other spot in the game. Sometimes it's okay to take on stage three if you know you're about to roll to zero and you just want to play for top four. This can be fine to take there. But don't take it, but but in, other than that scenario, don't take it at any, any other point in the game except for the very beginning of the game at 1-4. If you take it at 1-4, it's very strong. You can play it two different ways. You can actually hyper roll and you can sit there and just roll to zero every single turn and play around one and two cost reroll. That is a way to play this, play hyper roll. The other way that you can play hyper roll is you can just constantly push levels, staying under 10 gold, just constantly push levels and then stabilize on six or seven, roll for a really strong board on six or seven. And then you can decide from there whether you want to continue to roll and roll for a two or three cost reroll or if you want to continue to push levels and just push to eight and then roll to zero every turn for a strong board and then maybe you can econ to nine or you just stay eight and ride out for a top four or first place or whatever very good augment so you either push levels or you reroll when you take this but use this augment to your advantage um every player should learn how to play around a hyper roll it's a very strong augment in a lot of scenarios innovator heart your team counts as having one additional innovator it takes it your if you're playing an innovator this cannot be offered at the beginning of the game because it is too op at the beginning of the game um but yeah take this you're playing innovators guys irresistible charm debonair champions take 20 percent less damage gain leona guys i took this when i was playing a talent reroll game it was broken i was playing seven debonair it was crazy so take this if you're playing debonairs if you're going to play a lot of debonairs i'm grab back gain one random completed item this is very good to take in almost all scenarios uh it's great better earlier on earlier in the game the better because taking an item grab bag and i mean you're up an item that's huge to be an up an item and then the other thing about that is <clears throat> it gives you a lot of direction so if you get like if you open this to be in the game you get an infinity edge okay i'm gonna play ad or maybe you know maybe you might get a jewel and, you're like, and then you can play ap so it can give you a lot of direction so that can be very nice for that keepers at the start of combat your uh units gain um your units gain adjacent allies a 125 health shield for eight seconds if you guys remember keepers from set four this is keepers um so you just clump all your units together and they get a get a fat old shield um and the and these shields do stack so if you're if one unit is touching multiple units they will get all the shields from all those units they're touching um anyways in general decent augment to take most of the time it, you know the downside is you have to clump your whole team so just know that um that it's going to affect your positioning but if you don't know what to take this is a fine augment to take knives edge your units start combat in the front two rows gain 30 attack damage this is very good if you're playing a frontline dps like aurelia um or trinity or something like that so if you're going to play a frontline dps very strong with them lifelong learning scars gain two ability power after each player combat and an additional two if they survive combat lifelong learning if you want to take it with scholars you can take it but the meme around lifelong learning is that i spent my whole life learning not to ever take this augment uh so uh just just know you take this augment at your own risk uh you're going to be locked into a scholar build and so just 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 know that so take it if you want to play scholars the whole game and you want to take it as early as possible so at the beginning of the game ludens echo when your units cast cast and deal ability damage first target hit and nearby take some bonus magic damage this is very good on the first patch getting hard nerfed um this is much better in the early game any of the tiers much better in the early game just adding a lot of damage to your build very good if you're going to play uh champions with low mana cost something like brand something like ari something that's going to cast a lot very 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 good with them but in general this just adds a lot of nice damage to your build um, pretty good if you're already playing AP because you're more likely to build Magic Shred and the magic and this is magic damage. It does a, does a, apply after their magic resist. So very good when you're already playing magic damage based comps um, or units that have very low mana costs like RE and stuff like that. RE brand. Uh, makeshift armor. Your units um, with no items gain 35 uh, armor and magic resist. This is good to take all the time. Uh, the only downside is if you already slammed tons of frontline items on multiple different units, then this can kind of suck. But makeshift armor is great taken at the beginning of the game because you can basically just forego building frontline items for the rest of the game you can just like prioritize all your carry items and just take the leftover frontline items later because um these extra magic mag, armor and magic resist is going to give your frontline a lot of taking tankiness and you're just going to naturally get a frontline item later anyways so naturally late game 
if you don't have frontline items, when you get to the hyper late game and you actually need them, you'll be able to get them from carousels and you'll be able to item stack a huge tank. So this is just really good to take in all scenarios, um, but it's especially good in the early game because it can really give you direction. You can just prioritize carry items, get your tank items later. You don't have to worry about getting tank items. So very good for that. Meditation units uh, without items equip um, restore mana per second. This is good in all scenarios, pretty much, um, especially if you have low mana cost on units you're not um, building items around. It's really good, like, you know, if you're playing, say you're playing like a bodyguard enchanter composition or something like that, you're only gonna, and you're playing like RE carry, you're only gonna itemize like RE and Braum or like RE and Leona. And so you have all these other like high value units like Morgana, Oriana, Zyra, uh, maybe you have Silco and stuff like that, or, or Renata. And if you don't have any items sent on them, they can benefit a lot from meditation. So it's really good in that scenario when you have like high value casting units that you're just not going to be able to itemize. That you could itemize in a different composition, but you're just not going to. And this one can be very strong in that situation. It's also extremely strong in the early game. In the early game, you just take it and you just don't build any items. It'd be very great for you like getting like perfect items, you know, because you don't have to slam items on like stage two and stage three. So you can more likely get all the items that you really want because um, you can just leverage that you have meditation because meditation is basically like you have an item on all of your units. Mercenary Heart, take this. You're playing mercenaries or you want to play mercenaries in the early game, just take this to be in the game. Mutant Heart, you gain, you have, you gain a mutant. Uh, take this if you're playing mutants, guys. <clears throat> One for all. Uh, when your syndicates die, they grant your other syndicates AD and ability power. Take this if you're playing syndicates, guys. <laughs> um, overpower, um, after every two attacks, your strikers gain 75 or percent critical strike chance on their next attack gain a rig i think that's got removed from the game i could be tripping but uh if if it, if it is in the game take it when you're playing strikers guys uh pandora items gain a random component at at the start of each round oh gain a random component pause at the start of each round items on your bench are randomized excluding force of nature spatula and consumable items like reforger or stuff like that um this is Good to take at any point in the game but it is much better taken early in the game because if you take it really early early on in the game you can you can get perfect items for whatever build path you're going on so extremely good to take in the early game and it is uh fine to take at other points in the game but extremely good in the early game very good augment um like if i get this very beginning of the game i'm playing the game on easy mode it, it feels good payday after winning combat gain one bonus gold for each surviving syndicate this used to be a prismatic what the hell um <laughs> take this for playing syndicates guys um especially good in the early i'm not as good later on in the game for playing syndicates because gold is less valuable the later the game goes phalanx your units that start combat in the back two rows gain armor and magic resist this is very good to take all the time very good all the time um very good augment bony frontline gain two target dummies this is another one very good all the time a little bit better in the early early game very good augment to take if you don't know to take pirates mercenary units have a 50% chance to drop one gold when they kill a unit. Take this if you're playing mercenaries. You're going to play mercenaries. Uh, like You can take this really early on in the game if you're going to be playing mercenaries for your early game. Or if you're playing like mer a mercenary reroll like Gangplank or something like that or MF, definitely take it there. Recombobulator. It's probably the most fun augment in the game. Uh, champions on your board permanently transform into champions that are one cost more than them. And if they are two-starred, they will turn into something, something great. So um, they will be two-starred when they upgrade. So like for example, if you have like a two-star gen, it will upgrade to a random two-starred legendary unit. Uh, this is very good to take at any point in the game. It's so fun. So this is like the most fun augment in the game. Take this at your own risk. Uh, it can be very strong, but it can also just like, you know, mess up your whole world. <laughs> you also get magnetic remover, so you can remove the items uh, for upgraded units. Okay, runic shield. Arcanists start combat with a with a fat shield based off their ability power for eight seconds. Very good if you're playing arcanist vertical. Four arcanist or more. Very strong. Scholar heart, your team counts as having an additional scholar. Guys, play this if you're playing scholars, or if you can fit, or if like if taking this would allow you to fit in two scholar, four scholar, six scholar, etc. So um, this can be good in mo a bunch of different scenarios, but obviously good when you're already playing scholars. Uh, scrap heart, your team counts as having one additional scrap gain a gain a blitz crank. This is very good early game. It's very easy to play around scraps. Getting in something like four scraps can be very good for tempo. So taking this early or mid game much better. Taking this late game not as good unless you're already playing around scraps. Um, but yeah, good early and mid game to give you some direction. Second wind at the start of combat, um, or after 10 seconds of combat, your units heal for 50% of their health. And this changes on tier. There's a tier one and a tier two. Guys, this is in general, fine to take. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's not good. Take it at your own risk. But in general, this is a fine augment to take in most scenarios. Unless you have a very weak front line. If you have a very weak front line, then don't take this because they will not be able to benefit. 
Self-repair when the innovation dies will become untargetable and self-repair if the innovator is still alive. Guys, uh, I don't really like this augment, but it's fine if you're playing innovators and you know you're gonna play innovators the whole game. Uh, one great way to play around this is you solo frontline your innovator, so your or your innovation. So your innovation, like your bear or whatever, will die at the beginning of the combat. And of course, all of your other innovators are alive because that thing was solo tanking and it will revive itself and it will tank several times. I've seen combats where my bear or whatever, or my bear or my little scarab will We'll, we'll have three lives. They'll so fight a whole three different times he will tank. So um, can be can be very good, but you know, take it your own risk. A lot of people don't like it. Sniper heart, your team counts as one additional sniper, um, not gain a Tristana. I don't know what you gain now. Um, yeah, take it if you're playing snipers, guys. Sniper's nest, snipers gain 8% uh, damage per round. They've uh, started combat in the same hex, maximum 40%. So this can stack over a whole, you can kind of get the whole, uh, even if you don't play snipers the whole game, if you take this like at it, if you take this like late game and you have a, and you're playing gen carry, he can stack up the whole damage in like in like one stage. So, um, but it's obviously better in the early game if you're already going to play around snipers whole game. Like let's say you have an MF and you take this and you and you want to play MF carry, you can take it in those scenarios. If not, um, you can take it late game and play it with gen or something like that. It's fine. Um, but yeah, if you're playing snipers, this is this is good. But just know you're not going to be able to dodge stuff. But if you actually do get the full stack, this is a lot of damage added to your snipers. Can be very good um, in the scenarios that it's good. Socialite heart, your team counts as have one additional socialite. Take this if you're playing around socialite, or you can take it at the very beginning of the game. It'll reveal the socialite spot, and you can give you can get direction and kind of build a comp with that information in mind. But uh, just be careful; it can lock you in. So, but this is much better if you're already playing socialite. But can be fine to take uh, early game if you're not. So small yordles gain 35% dodge chance. Very good if you're playing yordles. Obviously, if you're playing yordle comp, extremely good. But if you're also just playing a comp where the where a couple of yordles are like the main focus of your comp, like let's say you're playing quirky carry and you take this and you don't end up running any other yordles, it's still fine. 35% dodge chance on your carry is fine. But obviously it's much better if you're playing the other thing. Or if you're playing reroll Arcanus or vertical Arcanus, you're playing three star Vex and Vex is the only yordle you're playing, it's still fine. 35% dodge chance on a Vex, that's great on a frontliner. So you can take this if you're playing, re playing yordles full on, or if you're, uh, or if a Yordle is a really core part of your team, like a frontliner or your main DPS, you can take it in those situations. Stand behind me at the start of combat. Bodyguards grant 100% of their bonus armor to non-bodyguard allies directly behind them. So it's like a reverse Silco situation. Um, <clears throat> increases bodyguards armor by 25%. Guys, take this install comps. Uh, very good in RE comps. Uh, that sort of thing. So you can take that if you know you're going to play bodyguards, you want to play stall comp, can be very good. Also very good with keepers. You also have keepers because you will be all clumped together. So it can be good in that situation. Stand United, your units uh, gain two attack damage and ability power per trait across your team. It has to be active traits, guys. Take this if you're going to be playing a, a large flex board. So you have a lot of small synergies. You're playing like two Arcanists, two Bodyguard, two Enchanter, three Syndicate, you know, that sort of thing. Um, can be very good in those scenarios. It's usually better with AD comps. Because a, a lot of AD comps will have dual scaling. Like they'll have, obviously they'll have an attack damage scale. and But their ability power will also scale their damage. Think like Draven. Um, his attack damage and ability power both scale his damage. But think like something like Ari. Only ability power scales their damage. You're not really thinking about Ari's auto attacks. So it's a little bit better in AD comps. But it is fine to take in AP comps as well. But a little bit better in AD comps. But make sure you're playing flex. Not very good in vertical comps. You're playing like 7 Chemtech, 3 Challenger. I mean, you're getting nothing from this augment. You're getting 4 AD. Uh, so make sure you're playing like around it. Very good with like Jace, Jay Silco because they have their own traits. Run like a Jason Silco, you can get like crazy value. Anyways, um, stored power. Your hexec units gain one ability power each time they are hit by hexcore hex core pulses. Gain a swain. Very good if you take early game. If you know you're gonna play hexec vertical, if you're gonna play four, six, or eight, can be good in those scenarios. All other scenarios, this augment sucks. Striker heart. Your team counts as one additional striker. Take this if you want to play striker vertical. You want to play more strikers. You want to play four, six, four or six. Take striker heart, guys. Um, study the blade while you were out partying i was studying the blade all units benefit from challenger trait this is called challenger unity now i wish it was called study the blade uh, <laughs> as if they were challengers so this is the same thing like the chemtech one um units that are not challengers will gain the benefit of challengers but it does not increase your synergy number guys take this if you're playing challengers um yeah the best number i found is if you're playing four um four of the tr people with the actual traits so four challengers and four non-challengers that's like the maximum benefit i can think of so good in those scenarios for sure or you can just play two but the more you add the less benefit you get you see what i mean the more your vertical goes up the less benefit so like four and two um is good in those scenarios i'm um, getting it to your team syndicate heart your team counts as having one additional syndicate again is all right guys play this for playing syndicates pretty simple thrill already talked about thrill 
Better than Celestial in the early game, not as good as Celestial in the late game, but generally very good to take all the time. Treasure Trove, very good to take at the very beginning of the game. You gain a blue orb and a gray orb. That could be like a Nico's help, or it can be just gold. It can be some units, that sort of thing. Very good at taking the early game because it can help you uh, build up an econ advantage in the early game. But taking it later in the game, it's a little bit harder to take. Uh, so just better in the early game. But if you have to take it later in the game, that's fine too. Um, Triforce, your units. Your three cost units gain health, starting mana, and attack speed. Guys, you can take this straight up in the early game. I think they are limiting um, if you can take it. You, I think you have to have two three costs now. I think they're changing the rule. But just very good if you're going to play three cost rerolls. So if you're going to play like a Trinimir build, going to play a Cinna build, going to play Lucian, Gangplank, so twin shots, that sort of thing. Um, basically, whenever you get this, you just want to maximize the benefit. So you want to like three star like a Nar, three star, you know, a three star a Nar, three star a Cinna, three star a Morgana, three star a, a Lucian, three star a Gangplank. There's a couple Triforce comps out there. Just look up the comps um, and play those. Uh, there's a couple variations like the twin shot variation, the enchanter variation. So you just want to three star as many of three cost units as you can. That makes sense. You still need to build a real composition, but this augment is very good if you're in those scenarios. Okay, True Justice, your enforcers deal true damage to enemies below 50% health, gain Sejuani. Guys, I would only take this if you know you're going to carry uh, an enforcer, like you're already carrying them. Like, I, there's not a Caitlyn build right now, but if there was a Caitlyn build, like you could take this, or you're like playing, you're already playing Jace carry. It'd be very good in that scenario. Other scenarios, don't take it, guys um and vi carry is just not it at the moment so um yeah only take it if you're going to if you are already playing you're an enforcer as a carry in other scenarios don't take it twin shot heart your team counts as having one additional twin shot guys this is extremely good if you're playing twin shots take it if you're playing twin shots i'm a twin shot connoisseur underdogs when your units uh whenever your team has fewer units alive than your opponent your units generate nine percent uh regenerate nine percent of their missing health every seconds this is a very strong very strong augment very good if you're playing cho'gath or colossus because colossus does lower your team size naturally or if a lot of people have phony frontline or you're just playing a stall comp um where you know you, you have a one unit that's gonna like one v nine at the end of the fight can be very good there like you know playing like a cho'gath even like playing like an ari when she's the last one left she's fighting four people this health regen can be very nice, but um, it's better like the tankier your units are. So it's really good with like Cho'Gath stuff like that. But other stall comps can be very good. Very good augment to take in general. Unstable evolution, very strong if you guys are going to play mutants, especially if you're going to reroll them. Because um, every time they two-star, they gain a benefit. So whenever they're three-star, it does combine them. Very, very, very good uh, if you are rerolling mutants. Very strong. But if you're playing mutants in general, very strong as well. Weak spot, your units attacks ignore 20% of their armor and, and uh, armor and reduces healing by 50% for five seconds. Very good. If you're playing AD comps, guys, just very good. It can give you a lot of, um, especially if you haven't built a Last Whisper yet or you haven't built healing reduction, can be very, very, very good. But in general, if you don't know what to take and you're playing an AD comp, this can be very, very, very good to take. All right, let's go to the tier two. Now, tier one is gonna, tier one definitely takes a lot longer than tier two two because a lot of these i will not have to talk about anymore because i already talked about them when i talked about their tier one we already talked about arcane nullifier um arcane crest you gain an emblem take this if you're playing arcanist um archangels embrace upon casting their ability your units gain ability power equal to 25 percent of their mana i know it says tier two here there are no more no other tiers so it's just called archangels embrace now um so yeah guys take this if you're playing a stally comp or units with high mana cost and you're kind of stalling so think like ari Think like Seraphine, like if there's a Seraphine carry build or like an Enchanter carry build. So units that you can buy a lot of time and they're going to cast a lot or they have really high high mana, high value costs because um, high or high mana and high value casts because um, this does buff them on their first cast. So if Syndra was to pick someone up and toss them like a ragdoll, that first toss that she does, it will have the increased ability power. So it does work on the very first cast. It is just old Archangels Embrace from old TFT sets. Um, good most of the time. <laughs> if you're gonna be playing, if you're gonna be stalling, it's good install builds. Okay, armor plating, Colossus uh, become invulnerable two seconds. Uh, the first time their health drops was 16 and 30. I thought this got removed, maybe it didn't. Um, but if it is still in the game, if you guys are going to play an Alistair or a Galio in your front line, or you're playing a Cho'Gath reroll, very, 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 very good in those situations. All other situations, it's useless, obviously. Okay, Assassin Crest, take it if you guys are playing Assassins, you need more Assassins, then take it. Backfoot, um, we already talked about it, Battle Mage already talked about it. Binary, your units equipped with two items temporarily gain a random completed item at the start of combat. This is very good to take a lot of the time, it's just really good, but it's better on like stage three or stage four carousel. 
And it's especially good if you haven't rolled for your comp yet. So if you're on stage four and you haven't rolled for your like late game comp yet, this is very good to take because you haven't committed all of your items uh, to what, you, what your late game carries are going to be. This is very, very, very good to take on uh, mid game and late game. Um, but late game before you have committed all of your items to your actual late game carries very good to take if you've already committed three items to like a tank and a carry then don't take this but if you haven't then very good very good very good and you really want to maximize the value really 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 good bodyguard crest uh take it with bodyguards uh broken stopwatch five seconds in the comment all enemies and non clockwork units are frozen in time for four seconds guys take this if you're going to play gin carry very strong or if you're going to play like a four clockwork comp with like zillion like zillion carry or if you're going to play like an oriana enchanter comp or you're going to play like four clockwork draven very good in those situations you get so much value off of this stuff um cool bruiser crest take it if you're playing bruisers guys build different too we already talked about it celestial we already talked about it challenger Take if you're playing challengers, Kim Tech Overload. Take if you're playing Kim Tech, Kim Tech Crest. Take if you're playing Kim Techs. Clear mind, if you have no units on your bench at the end of combat, gain three experience points. Very good taken at the very beginning of the game. Just note that you're probably going to run a very weak comp and you're going to be running a weak early game. Take this if you're comfortable having an econ advantage and having a health disadvantage in your early game. You will be very weak if you take this, but you can maximize your value. Basically, the way that you play this, if you take it early game, you take it early game, you lose all the way until stage three, pretty much, because you're not gonna be upgrading your board. You wanna maximize the experience points. And then on um, and then on level six, level seven, somewhere around there, you send it to stabilize your board. So you stabilize, you built a strong composition, sell your whole bench, and then maximize the value again for stage four, build a late game comp, sell your whole bench, and then you can go level nine, right? So you just wanna try to maximize this, but just be really careful when you, when you are trying to maximize this. You still need to be strong at some point in the game. You can't just econ the whole time um so if you need to eat, if you need to get strong on stage three just get strong and then sell your bench um if you need to get strong on stage four get strong sell your bench if you want to keep maximizing it right or you can just max or you can just get all the value in the early game and just pretend you don't have it late game but it is a gold augment so maximizing it throughout the game is pretty important when you retake this very good augment if you know how to play with an econ advantage component grab bag gain three random item components this thing is so good to take at any stage in the game but it's especially good if like there's a critical item to your build and you just do not think you're gonna get it. Like maybe you really need a last whisper and you're just like, man, I am not gonna get it. But it's very likely you'll get one of the components you'll need out of the item grab bag. If not, you'll get something else you can use and, and you can you can transition that into something else. But very good at all stages of the game, but especially good the earlier it is in the game because getting a huge, uh, getting an item component advantage is just so good in the early game. It gives you a lot of directions, very nice. We already talked about all the cybernetics. Debonair Crest, take it to playing Debonairs. We already talked about Syndicator, Double Trouble, Electro Charge, Exiles, Featherweight, four scores. Um, gain three random four cost champions. I don't believe you can get this at one four because that would be turbo broken. Uh, this is fine to take on stage three, but it's extremely risky. I do not really like this augment. Uh, you know, be careful. It's a very risky augment. It's very fun. You can take it if you like. Uh, don't take this late game, but it's fine on stage three. And I don't think you can take it on one four because that would be turbo broken. Future Sight. Know who you're gonna fight next, gain a Zephyr. This is in general, very strong. It's stronger the earlier you take it because you can maximize value. But just note that you're gonna be down like an actual combat augment because you are playing Zephyr, but you do get to like scout for Zephyr. But in a lot of lobbies, the higher ELO you go, people just like move every round anyways, like even if they're not being scouted for. But it is it is really nice knowing exactly who you're gonna fight because you can plan accordingly around that. So it's better the earlier you take it. In general, very good. I never take this because I'm too lazy um <laughs> i'm too lazy to bother especially when i'm streaming i got so much going on uh i'm too lazy to take it but in general pretty decent golden gifts gain one golden and one gray loot orb i don't believe you can get this at the beginning of the game because it'd be really broken to get this um in general take this if you don't know what to take because one golden could be like tome it could be like nico's uh stuff like that it could be like item removers and and a bunch of good stuff and and a bunch of money so the earlier you take this the better just earlier in the game money is better and especially if you get like a tome can give you direction but i don't think you can get this at the beginning of the game they keep changing the rules i think you can get it stage three and stage four but if you don't know what to take you can take this it can help you out but late game it's not quite as good like if there's a better augment to take that actually upgrades your board then take that but if there's not an augment that really upgrades your board you can just roll the dice and take the golden orb and see what you get um cool gold reserves mercenaries deal two percent more damage per one gold that you have very good if you guys are playing mercenary reroll. Very good in those scenarios. You know, it's fine to take if you're going to play mercenaries just for early and mid game tempo, but but you really need to consider that you're going to be down a gold augment if you're not going to be carrying 
a mercenary unit like Gangplank or Tom Kench or, or um, MF or something like that. So just note that you typically only take this if you're actually going to play Mercs the whole game. But if you do take it early game, it can be good. But just note that you are going to be down a gold augment and gold is gold augments are very good. So Hexite Crest, take this for playing Hexec. High Roller, gain uh, loaded dice plus eight gold. I thought this was a prismatic, but it could be wrong. Uh, loaded dice are very good early on in the game because if you take a loaded dice, and I believe this is prismatic and you get three loaded, you can instantly get a three star. You guys can look up the tables. It's public information. Just look, just look up TFT loaded dice. I think the website that does it the best is Meta TFT. And just look up the odds and you can find the one cost that you can just use this on at level three at the very beginning of the game. It instantly get a three star can give you a lot of tempo. That's the best way to use it. All other scenarios, it kind of sucks. Um, you know, only take it if you have no gold and there are some critical upgrades that you need and you have good odds for the uh, for the dice. But other than that, I would only take an early game. It's very good in the early game to gain tempo to get a three star unit. Basically, you free free win streak. You can three star an Alawi, three star a Camille, very easy. Camille is usually the one that works the best that I found. Uh, but you can instantly three star a unit. It can be very good for that. Instant injection, Chemtex now additionally trigger their bonuses at the start of combat. Very good if you're playing Chemtex. The more Chemtex, the better, because the more units are going to uh, get this. So if you're playing five, seven, or nine, very good in that situation. Not quite as good in three, unless you're like hyper carrying a Trinity Mirror, but much better in five, seven, or nine um, Chemtex. Very good with Chemtex. Field Lotus, magic and true damage from your unit's abilities can now critically strike. Your units gain an additional 25% cr uh, critical strike chance. This is... Um, I end up having to take this augment a lot. I never want to take it, but it can actually really open up your item builds because now it's really good with AP because AP units, you can just straight build an infinity edge and not build JG, not build Jeweled Gauntlet. You can also just build a Hodge and it'll up up your critical strike uh, chance in your, in, your, in your things will already critical strike. So I like the item flexibility this augment gives you. I think it's much better with AP, but you can still play with AD and AD units already can crit on their spells, obviously. Uh, but the additional critical strike chance is really nice on AD comps, especially if you're playing Infinity Edge. If you don't know how Infinity Edge works, the more critical strike chance, the more damage Infinity Edge does. If you don't believe me, read the item. Uh, so it, it is still really good in like Assassin builds where you're going to be building Infinity Edge or AD builds like Draven, Jin, that sort of thing. But I, I find it, um, you know, it, it feels better when you're playing it with AP because it really opens up your items. And like, even if you don't build crit, the random times that you're, your spells do crit. They crit really hard if you're playing a lot of AP. So um, I do like it more with AP and Assassins, but it can be really good in standard AD comps. Junkyard, every three rounds um, with the Scrap Tray active, gain a random component. Extremely good to take at the very beginning of the game because it is very easy to play Scraps. There's Ziggs, Blitz. There's Ziggs, Blitz, Echo, Ezreal. It's really easy to have two of those in your board the whole game um, or like the whole early and mid game. Very easy to have that. So very, very, very good. If you get offered this on stage three, it is still fine. You're going to farm three items going to stage five. Three item components. So think about it like this. This is item component grab bag, but you don't feel the power until you get to stage five. So it is worse than item component grab bag if you think about it in that way. But if you're actually going to play two scrap the whole game, like you know you're going to play like Blitz Aurelia, then this can still be fine to take in the mid game. It is weaker than item component grab bag. So if you want instant power and you have the option between the two and you're already playing scrap, then if you need the instant power, then take item component grab bag in the mid game. But if not, you can just take this uh, if you're going to play scraps in the late game because you can farm an additional like three items throughout the game, three item components. So you can have three, you can be up three completed items by like stage, middle of stage six or so if you're actually going to play it. But um, but yeah, but if not, if you're not going to play scraps in the hyper late game, generally you only take this um, at the very beginning of the game can be very strong. Keepers, we already talked about keepers, Knives Edge, uh, Ludens, Makeshift, Meditation, um, Merc, Crest, take your playing Mercs, guys, and you want to play Mercs. Metabolic Accelerator, also known as the LP Accelerator, um, gives you LP. Your tactician moves faster and heals for two health at the start of each PvP. This augment is better the earlier you take it. One four, it's very good, and at um, and, and at stage three, it is fine. The earlier you take it, the better. Very, very, very good augment. Very good augment. Um, if you don't know what to take and you get this offered, take it. Very good for top fouring. Mutant Crest, played if you're playing mutants. Phalanx, already talked about it. Reportable Forge. This augment is so good. This is another one, the earlier the better. It's very good in the early game. Since it got demoted from Prismatic, this augment has been very good. It was very bad at Prismatic because it just wasn't good enough to be Prismatic, but it's very strong at gold tier. So you open up an armory and you get to choose one of three Orn artifacts. Those are items from set four whenever Orn was a legendary. If you don't know the, don't know the items, then just look up Orn items TFT and look them up um, and you can look at them. 
but yeah, very good in the early game because you can, it can give you a lot of direction, especially if you get something like a Trinity Force or like a Collector, which is like 80 crit damage. You can be like, okay, cool. I'm going to play like an 80 crit and it can give you some really good, really good direction. Collector, extremely good early game. Something like a Rando is very strong. You know, Eternal Winter is good. Mana Zane. So uh, very, very, very good to take. The earlier, the better. Also, this is very good if you're in late game and you are down a carry item. You're just like, you know, you have a two item carry and you just don't think it's going to happen. I take a lot of games I've taken this when I'm playing like, you know, I might be playing like, I don't know, Kha'Zix and I have an Infinity Edge QSS. That's all I have. Or I have a BT QSS. And I'm like, man, I need some damage. And then I get Reportable Forge given to me. I pop it. And I get an Trinity Force or Collector, boom, I'm ready to go. And, and I'm good, I'm set. So really good if you're down a carry item, I really like it in those scenarios, or just taking an early game, very strong. Or if you don't know what to take, it's usually pretty good, because like something like Randoins, Eternal Winter, Mana Zane, you can pretty much always get value. Death, Death Stance, you can pretty much always get value no matter what. Rich get richer, gain 10 gold, your maximum interest is increased to seven. Really, really, really good to take at the very beginning of the game. Very strong because the 10 gold can help you get econ thresholds and you actually maximize the value. Just be really careful trying to maximize this value. You will have to get strong at some point. You can, a lot of times people can just fast eight with this, but sometimes you need to roll in the mid game to stabilize so you can actually get to level eight into level nine. So just note that taking this at stage, uh, stage three is not nearly as good, especially if you just rolled and especially if you feel like you do need a roll to get stronger. So you can only take this mid game. If you feel like you are already strong, you're already at 50 gold. It, it's good in that scenario. If you're not already strong and you feel like you need to roll on stage three or stage four, do not take this augment. It is huge bait. You will lose the game. Um, if you feel like you actually do need to roll in the mid game. But if you don't need to roll in the mid game, you already have gold, you can take it then. But if not, don't take it mid game. Only take it in the early game. Very good in the early game. Runic Shield, we already talked about it. Salvage bin, gain a random completed item. Selling champions break apart their full items into components. Very good augment to take. You get a random completed item and you can just slam items um, without feeling like you're locked into them because whenever you sell, you get the components again. Very good. It's better the earlier you can earlier you take it. Never take this if you already have your completed build and you already have your late game build because you're not going to sell and get value off of this. Um, unless there's just nothing else better to take and just the completed item is better than anything you can get. Um, then then don't take this. But you know, sometimes you have to take this augment in the late game, but it's better the earlier you have it. Scholar Crest, take it if you want an extra Scholar. Scrap Crest, take it if you want an extra Scrap. The Crest is a lot better than the Emblem. Um, or not the Emblem. The Crest is a lot better than just getting the Heart. Because you can actually put this on a unit and gain value from Scrap on that unit. So this is much better than the than the Heart, by the way. Okay, second win. We already talked about. Share the Spotlight. All adjacent allies to a Spotlight. And I believe this is updated to a Prismatic now. Um, because you start a bonus, gain 125% of the bonus. So all adjacent allies. So if it's on one Hex... All the hexes around it. If you put units over there, you get it. Very good comboed with like keepers because if you have keepers and share the spotlight, you're going to be clumped together. Very good if you're playing keepers. Very good if you're playing duet. And obviously, if you're already playing socialite, this is very strong. If you're playing, if you're going to play three socialite and you get the three socialite bonus on your whole team with 125% of it, crazy. That's why I got updated to prismatic. Um, so I believe it is prismatic. Twin shot range attacks and abilities can now bounce, dealing 45% less damage, gain a corky really strong if you're playing sharpshooters guys so if you're going to play sharpshooters the whole game take this augment really strong shrug it off bruisers regenerate 2.5 percent of their maximum health each second i believe this is actually a silver augment now um this is fine to take with bruisers it's fine um it's fine <laughs> only gonna play and the more bruisers the better i'm um, also good to choke at smoke bomb the first time assassins drop below 80 percent health they briefly enter stealth becoming untargetable and shredding all negative effects very good with assassins the more assassins the better Sniper Crest, gain a Sniper Emblem and an Ash. This is much better than a Sniper Heart because actually adding the Emblem to a unit like Draven or a unit like Seraphim can actually up their damage quite a bit, especially if you're going to play four Sniper. Um, so yeah, good if you're going to already play Snipers. Uh, very good to like Draven, stuff like that. People have like already have tons of range. Spellblade, after casting their ability, Arcanus, next attack, deal bonus magic damage equal to 225% of their ability power. Very good in Arcanist Vertical, guys. Last set, dude... At the, end of, at the end of the set, I got on to some tech playing some Lux builds. Six Arcanists, like you are just one type of people. Very good. The more Arcanists, the better. But if you only have a few Arcanists, it's not going to be very good. Unless you have like Archangels Embraced or something like that. And you're putting a Castal build, then it can be like good. You know, your RE can do a lot more damage by auto attacking. Uh, but yeah, really only good if you're going to play a lot of Arcanists. The more Arcanists, the better. So four more, and, and that can be pretty good. Or if you have like Archangels and you're going to stall it out. Dan United already talked about it. Striker Crest, like if you're going to play Strikers. Um, the Crest is much better than the Emblem because you can play like Striker Senna. Like Striker Senna is really good. 
Um, Striker Draven, Pog, you know, can be very good. Striker Trinomir, you know, so it is a lot better. Syndicate Crest, take it if you're playing Syndicates, guys. Thieving Rascals, free uh, Yordles from the Yordle portal. Have a 40% chance to arrive only not even going to get Very good, guys. Very good, especially if you're going to play Yordles the whole game. Like, let's say, like, if I get this at the beginning of the game, I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm playing Corky Carry, you know? Um, very good because you can maximize this. It's really nuts if if you maximize this and you take it at the very beginning of the game. I would not take this on stage three. I would only take this at the very beginning of the game because it's so easy to play around Yordles in the early game. And even if you don't play Yordles the whole game, you can form a bunch of items um, in the early and mid game. It's just it's just like um, the, the scrap version of this. Very good. Three's Company gained four random three cost champions. This can be very good taken at the very beginning of the game if it's off. Uh, I don't know if it can be offered, but I believe it can be offered at the very beginning of the game um, because this is just 12 gold straight up. 12 gold straight up. So even if you don't use the units, 12 gold. That's really good. Earlier you take this, the better. Throw the hunt. We already talked about it. Tiny Titans. Your tactician gains 35 health, grows larger, and has a maximum of 35. 135 health. So you don't get 135 health. It's just if you already have 100, you can have 135 health. This is better the later you take it. If you take it in the early game, this is not good. Do not take it in the early game. It is bad. Um, I mean, maybe you have to take it, but it's bad in the early game because one of the benefits... Because whenever you take this, you want to play a weak board because you want to maximize econ because you have this big health advantage, right? But the problem with that is the big benefit. One of the biggest benefits of playing a weak board is that you get tr you get carousel priority. So you actually get to go to carousel and you get you get a you can get a high cost unit um, or you can get exactly the item you want because you're in last place. That's why metabolic is so good um, in this game because you can just play a really weak board. You could still be in last place, but you can recover your HP throughout the game but you can still get good carousel priority while also having the ability to recover HP. Tiny Titans is really good the later you take it. So it's the opposite of Metabolic. Metabolic, better the earlier you take it. Tiny Titans, better the later you take it. So guys, take this late game. Stop taking it early game. You guys are ruining the win rate and making the devs think they need to buff it. <laughs> they, were revert they were going to buff on the patch that I'm on, but they reverted it right before the day before the patch um, because it is broken, but players don't know how to use it. Please do not take this in the early game. Please take it on stage four. It is very strong on stage four or stage three if you already have the items that you want. Okay, cool. Titanic Force, your units um, with more than 1,400 uh, maximum health gain attack damage equal to 3% of their maximum health. Very good if you're playing reroll. Very good if you're playing reroll, especially if you're playing like Triforce and you're rerolling. Ooh, can be very good. Also very good when you're playing bruisers. Those are the scenarios in which you take them. Trade Sector, gain a free shop refresh each round. This is very good on stage one and stage three. I don't even think you can get offered it in the late game. Very good on stage one and stage three. The earlier you take it, the better. Very good general augment. Treasure Trove two, gain one blue and two gray loot orbs. I don't know exactly the rules on when you can take this, but the earlier, the better. Any type of econ trait, the earlier, the better, except for like Tiny Titans, because you know, we already explained why. But the earlier, the better. This is good. If you don't know what to take, this is gonna give you some gold, give you some opportunity to get some, get some um, money and some units. Triforce 2, um, we already talked about Triforce. Take it if you're playing 3 cost reroll. True 2s, take it if you're playing... Um, oh wait, we haven't talked about True 2s. Gain 2 random 2 star 2 cost units. This is really, 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 really strong on 1-4. It is very strong. This can instantly give you direction. You can It can totally just like set you up for a 2 cost reroll board. But if it doesn't set you up for a 2 cost reroll board, you can just use this to play a really strong early game. Just think about it. You have 2, two cost 2 star units at Stage one, that is crazy. On the flip side, there are scenarios that it is not that great. <laughs> there are very few scenarios that it is very weak. Like if you get like a Lulu two star and a Zillion two star, I think that is the worst scenario I can possibly think of. But the thing is the low end, there's, so, there's, a, lot more, or there's a lot more high end scenarios and mid tier scenarios than there are low end scenarios. So this is in general, Good to take all the time at 1-4. But just be warned, sometimes you can get griefed. Sometimes you get griefed. But most of the time you take this, this is the freest top four of your life. Very, very, very good if you're going to be willing to play around those two units. And the thing is, if you end up getting like a two cost, two star that you can really play around, like say you get like a Rek'Sai or something or a Sejuani, and you're like, all right, I'm going to play around this whole game. And then the other one you get is like a Lulu, and you really don't want to play around like Yordles or something like that. You actually want to play a really strong early game. Then just sell the Lulu. It's five gold. It's still five gold. You know, it's still five gold. So five gold is very good in the early game. Guys, this is not very good to take on stage three. Sometimes you can take it if you have nothing good to take and you just high roll out of your high roll out of your ass. Maybe you're already playing Rek'Sai and you get it. One game I was playing Ash reroll and I got two two star ashes from this. Instantly Ash three star. So, but that is really unlikely. I only recommend taking this at one four. Very VIP. When an ally dies, they grant 
the debonair vip uh 30 percent of their maximum health for the rest of combat and canis syndra very good you're playing vip or very good if you're playing um debonairs the more debonairs the better weak spot we already talked about it why spinning gain two experience points when you refresh your shop gain four gold uh this is actually a prismatic tier now this is better the earlier you take it um and when you take this the way you play you, you just really need to maximize it you just roll for strong roll for a strong board until you're strong instead of leveling you just basically always roll um to get the strongest maximum build you can get and to maximize uh the value of of this so cool woodland trinket at the start of combat your highest attack speed unit creates two uh small health copies of themselves this is very good in the early game but it is really bad at every other part of the game <laughs> um so only takes this in the early game but no it's going to be pretty bad in the late game most of the time you could use it to help protect you from assassins but the problem with that is like even if you're trying to use it in that in that regard like which is like a scenario that makes kind of kind of sense in the late game a lot of um late game units their cast their 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 ability is coded to go towards the the largest group of enemies and if you're having two units spawn out of your carry and you're probably already having units protect your carry in the first place it is very likely the aoe abilities are going to be sent your way so it is just not very good to take um there it is only going to take early game if you're going or if you're going to cheese with mutants it is very good if you're cheesing with mutants and you're going to play um so if you have dark star mutant because the way dark star this will work with dark star the way dark star works is when an ally dies on your team all of your mutants gain extra damage so uh this is good in that situation because they will count as units for your dark star trait other than that don't play this augment it is, it is shit and they're gonna they're gonna have to buff it a bunch they're, they're buffing it at the time we make this video um, but it is not very good all right now to the prismatics even less augments here let's talk about them arcane nolfar already talked about it arcanist crown gain two arcanist emblems don't need to talk about the crowns guys all the crowns take it if you're already playing that trait very good backfoot we already talked about it band of thieves gain two thieves gloves this is really good to take in the early game can give you a very strong early game i don't really like taking this augment that much um, but it can be very good in the early game it's also very good if you have no frontline items like what you let's say you get to the late game and you just have six carry items and you're just like oh god i'm gonna have no frontline items i don't have makeshift take this boom slam it on your frontliners you got a frontline now baby let's go so very good in the early game or very good if you have no frontline items you can just straight up slam these or if you have like or if you re-rolled a lot of units and you have three-star units that you just can't itemize and put these on your three-star units very good battle mage already talked about it blue battery already talked about it already talked about these crowns built different celestial crowns overload crown soul um cybernetics debonair crown disintegrator double trouble electro charge um enchanter soul take your plane enchanters guys enforcer soul take your plane enforcers four enforcer can be very strong this is decent in the early game as well because you get eight gold so these these ones that give you eight gold are pretty good in the early game so that's something to consider on these souls is that they do give you eight gold as well but most of these like souls and stuff you really just want to take if you're already playing that build but it is important to note that you can take some of these in the early game even if you're not playing those traits yet because uh you can get um because of the gold the gold is really nice enforcer is one that's pretty good in the early game but they keep nerfing enforcer just be careful with that um we already talked about exiles we already talked about these already talked about future site you get a radiant zephyr so it's a little bit different radiant zephyr they cc them for about 10 seconds they've been like changing the balance a little bit over time but i think it's about 10 seconds now can be very good uh but just know you're gonna have to put in a lot of work that game golden gifts too i believe you can only be offered this at in the late game it is too good if you're offered it early game uh but they keep changing that golden gifts guys just take this if you are i mean two golden take this if you don't have a better option you know like let's say you're playing vertical hex decks and getting a hex deck crown would give you or hex deck soul whatever would give you eight hex deck then i would never take golden gifts because i could just play around eight hex decks so much better than like taking a risk golden gifts right so if you don't have a better option taking golden gifts you're you're kind of gambling um but sometimes it can be really really good you know you might get some spatulas you might get uh you might get some nikos you might get a bunch of gold so uh this can be fine to take but in general if you don't have a better option then take this but if you have a better option just stick with the better option unless you just want to play a really high risk high reward uh golden ticket each time your shop to refresh you gain a 40 percent chance to gain a refresh now this is every time it's refreshed this is not just when you press the d key this is every time the round changes you have a 40 percent chance increase so every single time it refreshes uh, this is very good. The earlier you take it, the better. Hexec Crown, take your plane Hexec. High end shopping champions appear in your shop as if you're one level higher. This is better the later you take it. Because if you take this the early game, like, I don't know, if you're level five and you're getting level six odds a few rounds before people, like, that is nice. <laughs> but wouldn't you rather have, like, two random completed items? <laughs> or, 
I don't know, golden gifts or featherweights or exiles or anything else. So um, this is better the later you take it because if you're level nine with level 10 odds, that's really awesome. You're level eight with level nine odds, that's really good, right? But if you're level six with level seven odds, like who cares? Um, <laughs> I mean, that's nice, but you know, you could have an extra 50 attack damage on all of your front row, front row units. So just be careful with it. Uh, cool, we already talked about these. Level up. When you buy experience points, gain three additional experience points, you now can reach level 10. This is better the earlier you take it. Very good early game, very good mid game. Not quite as good late game, but there are some scenarios, like if you're already going fast nine, it can be very good to take this, right? But it's better the earlier you take in general. We already talked about Ludens, already talked about makeshift, March of Progress, gain five experience points per round. You can no longer gain experience points. Better the earlier you can take it. I don't even know, you can't be offered this in late game, obviously. I don't even know you can be offered it in the mid game anymore, but it's much better at 1-4 than it is on stage three. Uh, very, very, very good to take early game, guys. Um, but be, be careful taking this mid game if it is able to be offered. Meditation, already talked about it. Merc Soul, take you for playing Mercs. Uh, mutant Crown, take you for playing Mutant. New Recruit, gain one extra team size. This is good to take at all stages of the game. Um, unless you just don't really have a better, like there are certain scenarios where having an extra unit doesn't really upgrade your comp that much. But in general, if you don't know what to take, this is always going to be pretty good. Um, but there are some niche scenarios where you don't really gain a lot of value from this. But Especially good if you're playing Colossus, because, you know, you're playing the anti-fawn, and then you gain a fawn, so that's pretty nice. Phalanx, very good. Radiant Relics, open up an armory and choose one of the four Radiant items. This is from stage, or this is from set 5.5. You can get a Radiant item. If you guys are unfamiliar with the Radiant items, you can just look up Radiant set 5.5 TFT items and look at it. If you did not play set 5.5, then just look up that table. I'm not talking about each item. They're in, there's like 30 items, so... Uh, but there's a lot, lot of very good items. Pro tip, if you guys, uh, you know, here's some good items. Banshees, very good. Uh, the Radiant Banshees, very strong if you don't know the take. And uh, Sunfire is very good. Early in, or earlier you take it, the better. The Sunfire one is very good in general if you don't know what to take. So those are just a few, a few freebies for you. Um, cool. Radiant Relics, very fun. I love playing around it. We're going to talk about that. Souls, um, second win three got removed because it is useless. Sniper Crown, take if you're playing snipers. Uh, very good if you get the emblems as well um, because there's a lot of good emblem units like Jace, Draven, that sort of thing. We already talked about it. Uh, Socialite, if you're already playing Socialites, take this. Uh, Stand United, Strike Your Crown, Sonic Your Crown. Golden Egg, getting a massive golden egg that hatches in five turns. They move it down to five, it used to be seven. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, just make sure you look at your egg before you before you take it. it might, it's either five or seven. Um, cool. This is, you can only be offered this in the hyper late game. Guys, only take this if you know that you can survive stage five while being down a prismatic so if you're really strong or you have a lot of health and you're decently strong you can take this don't take this in other scenarios you're going to bleed out but it is really 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 fun but only take this if you're very far ahead treasure trove three gain three blue loot orbs and two gray loot orbs this may have been removed from the game they keep messing around with treasure trove and golden gifts and treasure trove and golden gifts are confusing honestly they're very similar um i don't think you can be offered this early game but the earlier you can take this the better because it is econ trait but this may have been removed from the game i'm not sure but any of any econ trait guys the earlier you can get it the better except for the small exceptions like tiny titans and i think there's like one other more uh triforce we got there right there twin shot soul takes your plane twin shots very good five twin shot very strong um verdant veil your units are immune to crowd control effects for the first 15 seconds of combat very good if you're playing a melee carry i mean it's good with any carry, but it's exceptionally good with a melee carry like Trinimir, like Aurelia, um, that sort of thing. So you don't have to build QSS on them because they they get a lot of value from having a QSS, right? So having this, the later you take this augment, the better. If you take this early game, there's just not a lot of CC in the early game. You don't gain the dodge chance from having a QSS. That's what a big value of wearing a QSS. So this is not good in the early game. Do not take this in the early game. Take it the later, the later you can get it, the better. Um, but obviously you would not want to take this if you have already built a QSS on your primary DPS. Um, it doesn't mean this is bad because you still gain CC immunity on everyone else. Um, and obviously this is not as good with Colossus, but the later you take this, the better in general. We saw already talked about it. Windfall, gain gold based on uh, a number of augments you currently have. Um, so 18, 30, and 45. So the later you take it, the more gold you have because gold is better in the early game. It is worse the later on you take it. Guys, take this augment if you have to. That's just general. I do not like taking this at the beginning of the game. I really do not like taking this. But it is like because windfall, you gain, I don't even know if it's 18 gold. It's either 18 or 15. They keep changing it. But you gain some gold, right? But like there's other augments. Like you could take Scholar Soul. You gain two additional scholars, which you can play in every comp. You can play scholars in every comp in the game, and you gain gold. 
So just be really careful taking this scenario again, but sometimes it is your only option. I mean, getting 15 or 18 gold, can it really help you meet a lot of eco thresholds? So it is like, there is a lot of value in just getting a little bit more gold, especially earlier on the game. The earlier the game, the more gold matters. But I do not like taking Windfall because things like Scholar Soul exist. I feel like I'm taking a bad augment. But sometimes you just have to take this, guys. Sometimes you need the gold. Sometimes you need this. I've taken this a lot. Late game is the most scenarios that I take this. Like, I just like, man, the only way I can upgrade my comp is if I have 40 more gold. And I have no gold. I'm going to die soon. And then, boom, I get injected 45 gold. Instantly hit my comp. So it can be very nice. Those, that's usually the scenario I take it. I feel really bad about taking it early on in the game. But that is not to say that it is bad. It just feels bad. Because things like... Uh, things like Scholar Soul exist, Scrap Soul exists, things that actually upgrade your board strength and give you very, a lot of gold. So you can meet a lot of eco thresholds. Like getting eight gold can allow you to meet a lot of powerful eco thresholds. I mean, 15 and 18 gold is much better, but it is just it's tough, all right? All right, at the start of combat, your highest health champion creates a um, a 16 health copy of themselves, excluding their items. So they do not get the items, but they do get the star level. If it is a three star, they get the star level. Much better with three star units, obviously. Um, and it's better the earlier you take it. This is very good for like wind streaking in early game, but I, I, I would almost never take this in the late game. I would almost never take this in the late game unless you're like trying to do some dark star cheese. Very good in the early game for wind streaking, very strong. All right, guys, that is the augments. Maybe I missed, uh, there might be one that I missed. And if I missed an augment, then please, uh, you know, you write it in the comment section. I'll reply to a comment if I did miss one. Uh, because augments are so weird. They have to, they constantly get updated. They constantly get removed and added to the game. They constantly change the rules at which augments can operate because augments are really, really, really hard to balance. And that is not a shade towards devs. I think augments are the greatest thing they've ever added to TFT. And it's going to take a long time and a lot of work to optimize how to properly integrate them into the game. And I think augments are gonna be part of the game forever now. I mean, this is, I mean, like armories were like, aren't like just think about it. Armories were like augment light and then augments are like augments, you know? And so it's either gonna get crazier from here or this is the max craziness and they're just gonna keep optimizing this system. I love augments guys. I think they're awesome. Anyways, if you guys learned from this video and you like this video, please like the video. Please like it. It, it really helps. And 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 uh, yeah, I know you got. I know tons of you already showed so much support for the channel, and I appreciate you guys. Um, you guys are legit changing my life right now. Um, everything's been growing like crazy on YouTube, Twitch, that sort of thing. I'm just really, 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 really grateful uh, to you guys. So, but if you do like the video, that does help me out a lot. If you guys want more of me, I stream at Twitch.tv slash Trading TFT. I stream about three to four days a week. I stream during the week, and I film most of my videos on the weekend. Um, and then uh, twitter.com slash TFT. I post pretty much every day if you guys want to follow me there. And uh, yeah, other than that, I just hope you guys have a good day. Hope you have a good night, wherever you are. Hope you're doing well. See you guys. Bye.